New Hampshire. Did you know that New Hampshire's State House is the oldest state capital across the country in which the legislature is still meeting in its original chambers? So uh, since since colonial days, they've been always meeting in the same chamber. I'm impressed by that. That's New Hampshire. I'm joined today by Kevin Hallinan, principal of Winning Incorporated. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's really good to have you here. Thank you for joining me today. Where are you located? Where are you based that you're calling in from? I'm in Roslindale, Massachusetts. I'm in my home office this morning. Lucky you. <laughs> Definitely avoid the traffic as often as you can. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, Kevin, again, thank you for joining me here for the 3X Value Growth Podcast, Seven Questions in Seven Minutes. But for those of you who don't know Kevin, let me give you a brief introduction to what he brings to the table. Kevin is an expert at developing sales teams into high achievers and sales leaders into true coaches and mentors. He is a partner at Winning Incorporated, part of the worldwide sales training network of Sandler. He regularly speaks before audiences large and small and hosts Winning Business Radio on W4CY Radio. Welcome again, Kevin Hallinan. Thank you very much, Kerry. Glad to be here. Today's topic with Kevin is a a challenge for you all that I think you'll appreciate Kevin's advice on, and that is avoiding the trap of repeating sales mistakes. And we're going to do that in just seven minutes. So, Kevin, are you ready to answer seven questions in just seven minutes? I am. Let's do it. Kevin, who's your ideal client? So, my ideal client is uh, a closely held company, Greater Boston, with, say, 10 or more salespeople. So, we work with individuals and we can work with big brand names. But the sweet spot would really be that closely held Greater Boston 10 plus salespeople. And question number two then becomes, what problem is it that you're trying to solve for these middle market businesses? That's a great question. So it's the simple answer is that sales organizations, they're just not meeting expectations. Um, So if you take any group of salespeople, you have two, you know, you have a small percentage at the top, say five to to 10% that are killing it consistently. You have say five to 10% that are at the bottom that maybe shouldn't even be employed there anymore. They're not happy. And you have the bulk of people in the middle. And those are the, that, that's the group of people that creates the most frustration. They're good people, but they need to be brought up to the level of the high achievers. Absolutely. So when companies are experiencing this, my third question is, what are the typical symptoms of that problem that they're experiencing or that they start talking about? So the easiest one that I hear most often and that uh, I find that people ref- that refer me business hear most often is, Sales are good, but they're not good enough. And the other is, do I have the right team, an owner or a a sales leader would say, to get me to the next level? So, and the other is, too much of our business comes from just a small number of salespeople. Oh, all of those sound really familiar to me as well. And when you're talking about sales are good, but not good enough, I say the same thing about the whole value of the business Mm -hmm. because companies are performing. They're they're comfortable where they're at, but they're nowhere near their full potential. So we're on the same page in trying to elevate everyone to actually deliver all that they possibly could. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So my fourth question is, what are the most common mistakes that you see owners making when they try to solve that problem on their own? Oh, two things. Um, One is, I believe they, and I've seen this all the time, they spend money on marketing which by the way, we should do, but they spend money on marketing, hoping to overcome the problem or they just fire and hire without a system. So they're not, you know, they, they fire those people that shouldn't be there and that's maybe something they should do, but then they're not replacing them with a hires, right? They hire more toward more to the, the need for a body. than I'm going to take my time and find that a player. 
and and that's where they're actually losing more value, aren't they? Because they're spinning their wheels going through that process over and over and not getting the quality that they need, but they've spent time and money and resources to find and bring on board the not not the a player that they need. It takes a ton of effort and time to do just that, to bring on, to hire anybody. So why not spend that time and hire A players? It's just that hiring a salesperson is different than hiring anybody else. Um, there's a lot more intangible in that salesperson's skill sets. And it's harder to measure A players than, you know, let's say if, if I wanted a, a A plus certified um, uh, you know, person for an IT company, I can measure for that. I can do a test for that, right? But a salesperson, depending on the different organizations, there's all different parameters and variables that you can't control for. Right. And various skill sets, depending on how challenging their sales environment is. Correct. Absolutely. From, from, a, from commodity sales, where I'm just picking up the phone and taking an order, to multi-month sales cycle, right? With multiple players. So with what you're doing at Winning Incorporated, what's one free, valuable action that you think our audience members could implement that will actually help them to increase the value of their business from what you're talking about in terms of avoiding these mistakes? Another fantastic question. So the simple answer to that would be hold salespeople accountable to minimum behaviors. You know, most of the time uh, in, in say mid-market to, to smaller companies, uh, sales executives get upset when their team doesn't have a certain pipeline size. Well, that's okay, right? That, that's not incorrect. But what's much more important is hold people accountable to the minimum behaviors that drive pipeline. Isn't that magic? It is. And it's not, it's not rocket science, but it's funny. It is magic, right? No, when you track those numbers, it's like, oh, it really works. Absolutely. Definitely. So then I'm going to ask you, my sixth question is, what's a valuable free resource that you can offer that we can direct our audience members to so that they can get a little bit more flavor about what you're offering here? Yeah, thank you for that opportunity. So they would want to go to Winning Incorporated, our website, which is winninginc.com, winninginc.com. Click on the resources tab, and there are a bunch of free offers, white papers, um, articles, downloads, uh, things like, um, I'll just give you a couple of examples. Deliver the winning sales presentation, free sales management and customer service tips. Uh, let's see one I like a lot. How to overcome prospecting mistakes and increase your sales pipeline. Another's uh, four best practices for salespeople that turn emails into phone discussions. So there's just a ton of resource there. Thank you for those resources. Those are really valuable. Those sure. people can act on immediately. Thank you. So my last question is really to turn the tables back to you. What's one question that I should have asked you that would give great value to our listeners? And then please provide the answer. These are really good questions. So, yeah, I, I would say, why do business leaders continue to make the same mistakes over and over again? Right. That's something that kind of drives me is um, we have we tend to have blinders on. Um, they tend to think they can fix those mistakes and mitigate them and move on when they don't realize the same mistakes are happening over and over again. For example, why am I hiring? I don't think I'm doing it at the time, but why do I end up with, with C players in my sales organization, right? Why am I not getting good at handling the same objections? Why do I allow my salespeople to run me? And by the way, that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, I'm not saying salespeople are bad. I am one, right? But why do I allow my sales organization to run me without accountability. Exactly. That's a powerful one. Thank you very much for providing that. The accountability, and as you were saying, the measurements, they're huge. They're not hard to do. They don't cost anything, right. but they're invaluable to the results you're looking for. Right. Absolutely. I, a lot of the organizations that I work with, um, the leaders didn't come up through the sales organization, so that world is, is foreign to them. They're technologists, they're experts in a field, they're not sure how to coach and manage the sales animal, if you will. Because that's not their strength. That's not where, where, what they brought to the table. Exactly. Definitely. Well, Kevin, this has been invaluable for our listeners for the 3X Value Growth Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Kevin Hallinan of Winning Incorporated. Thank you very much, Carrie. 
Thanks for checking out the 3X Value Growth Podcast. If you like what we're doing here, head over to iTunes and subscribe, leave us a review, or rate us. It's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to learn more about the 3X Value Growth model, go to www.3xvaluegrowth.com forward slash model for the PDF.